So let's say you either sold a naked call option or a naked put option on some stock that you were either bearish or bullish on. And initially, you were very excited about the position. You thought the setup was perfect, you kept your trade size in check, everything looked good, except now, unfortunately, the stock has really started to move against your position and you're losing a lot of money as a result. What should you do? Hey everyone, this is Scott here again with a new video to help you learn how to trade, invest, and master your finances so you can apply that knowledge in the real world and multiply your money. And in today's video, you'll be learning how to adjust a short naked option position, like a naked call or naked put, using other options. And if that sounds good to you, then please do me a favor and hit the like button on this video and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any of my future content. Now very quickly before we get started here, I just want to announce that you can also find me on Skillshare where you can take my very in-depth classes on options trading and stock market investing. And I provided some links to some of the introductory courses of mine in the description of this video below. So be sure to check them out and when you sign up for Skillshare using any of those links, you'll get a two week free trial. And so with that being said, let's jump on over to Thinkorswim now and we'll get things started. Okay, welcome to Thinkorswim here and the stock we'll be looking at in today's video is going to be Viacom which is a global media and entertainment company. And this stock in particular, along with Discovery, has been in the news recently for the absolute butchering of the stock price. As you can see recently here, the stock got up to a price of just over 100 bucks per share. And then in just a few days, it has come all the way down to 44 bucks per share. That is a massive, massive decline in just a few days. Now, especially if you are a contrarian like myself, where when you see stocks fall, that's when I usually get bullish and sell naked put options. And then conversely, when stocks skyrocket, that's usually when I get bearish and sell call options. Now, fortunately, I did not sell any put options on Viacom here. And that's mostly because I just wasn't even aware the stock existed when this was happening. But I can definitely imagine that if I was aware of this stock and what it was doing, I could definitely see myself maybe at this point when the stock fell from 100 down to around 70 bucks per share, I probably would have sold a naked put option on this stock. And I would have targeted maybe the 60 strike put option, or given that the implied volatility was so high, I could have gone all the way out to maybe the 50 strike put option and still collected a decent amount of money for selling these contracts here. Now, of course, I'm fully aware that when I do sell a naked put or naked call, the stock can still move against me in the short term, right? It's almost impossible that you're going to call the very top of a stock or the very bottom. And so obviously, if I sold a put option at this point here, when the stock had reached 70 bucks per share, clearly it kept going down after that. And unfortunately here, it was only about halfway done from being totally butchered. So this is a great example of basically a worst case scenario in which you sell a naked option to take advantage of both very high implied volatility and also a directional assumption. And unfortunately, just getting the direction totally 100% wrong. So what can you do in situations like this? Well, let's go to the trade tab here and take a look at the options on Viacom. And we'll go into the May expiration cycle here. And as always, on the left-hand side here, these are the call options. On the right-hand side, these are all the puts. And then down the middle, these are all the different strike prices. And so let's say, continuing with our example here, that once Viacom had fallen from 100 down to 70 bucks per share, at that point, I had sold the 60 strike put option, a full $10 out of the money, at least at that time. And so obviously now fast forwarding time, just a few days later, the stock is down to 44 bucks per share, 44 and a half basically. So as of now, my 60 strike put option is a full $15 in the money. And so when it comes to hedging or adjusting a naked option like this, your adjustment is going to be based off the delta of the option you have sold, right? You can see in the top here, this column shows you all the deltas for all of these different put options. Now, in case you are not aware of what delta is, I do have a separate video that takes a deep dive into option delta, and I will post a card above linking to it so you can watch it. But very simply stated, delta will just tell you how much the price of the corresponding option will change for a $1 move in the price of the underlying stock. So in the case of Viacom here, if the price of the stock moves up or down by $1, the price of this put option is going to change by $80. And I know it technically says negative 0.8 here, and so again, if you don't understand why that is, go watch that other video of mine that I mentioned. But for the purpose of this video, just interpret the deltas as all positive numbers. And the deltas for call options are positive anyway. And also just multiply them by 100. So again, instead of reading this as negative 0.8, just read it as 80. And then just think about this logically. If Viacom were to increase in price by $1, 
What happens to the prices of all put options when the underlying stock price increases? Well, put options decrease in value. So in that case, if Viacom goes up in price by $1, the price of this put contract is going to fall in price by $80. And then conversely, if Viacom falls by an additional dollar, well, that's going to increase the prices of all put options, right? That's just how put options work. So that means for the 60 strike put option here, the price is going to increase by $80. So in a nutshell, that's all what Delta is meant to tell you. And now you'll notice if you scan the deltas for both the put options and the call options here, and I do know there's a few NAs in this table as well, but just ignore those for the time being. And so you'll notice the further away you go from the stock price, for both the calls and the puts, the deltas decrease. And then conversely, the further in the money you go, the higher the deltas will be. So this means that when Viacom was at 70 bucks per share, and that's when I sold this put option, the delta for this put at that time was maybe around 20 or 30, definitely not 80 though. It was certainly a lot smaller. So let's say for the sake of the example here, the delta was 30 when I sold this put initially. And so by selling this put option, what I'm hoping for is for the price of this option to decrease, right? Because when I sell an option for let's say 500 bucks and then the price drops from 500 down to 200, well, at that point, I can buy the option back at that lower price and make the difference as profit, which in that example would be a $300 profit. And there are many ways the price of an option can decrease. In the case of the 60 strike put option, the price can decrease if I was actually directionally correct and Viacom did start to bounce and go higher. The price can also decrease from a contraction in implied volatility and also from time decay, meaning that simply the passage of time will decay the value of all option contracts. But unfortunately, with Viacom stock dropping so significantly, which as I just explained, when the price of the underlying asset drops, that's going to increase the prices of put options. And that's going to work against my position. I want the opposite thing to happen. So that's why I would be losing money on this position. And if the delta for this put was initially 30, that means when I sold this option, when Viacom was at 70 bucks per share, and then Viacom dropped from 70 down to 69, the price of this put option would have increased by around 30 bucks. And therefore, that means for my position, I would have been down 30 bucks at that time. Not a big deal. But as Viacom continued to fall lower, the delta of my put is going to expand and get larger and larger and larger. So as Viacom went from 69 down to 68, from 68 to 65, 65 down to 55, and so on, I am not just going to keep losing 30 bucks for each $1 move down in the price of Viacom. The initial move from 70 down to 69, I would lose 30 bucks, but then from 69 down to 68, I might lose 32 bucks, right? Because my delta is going to start to expand. And then from 68 to 67, I might lose 35 bucks. Until now at this point, if Viacom goes from 4464 down to 4364, just based on that directional move, I would expect to lose around 80 bucks, 80 additional bucks on this position, which is almost three times higher than where I started, right? So basically the point I'm making here is the further the stock moves against your position, the faster your losses are going to accelerate. So then the question is, how do you slow down this acceleration? And there are a few ways you can do it. And in this video, I'll be showing you how to use options to slow down the bleeding. So in this case, what you can do is sell a call option against your position. So for example, what if I sold this call option right here? This is also the 60 strike call option. And so if I did this, the first thing to note is obviously by selling another option, I am taking in more credit. This call option here is trading for about 120 bucks. And so if, for example, I initially sold the 60 strike put option for maybe 500 bucks, well, now I'm adding another 120 bucks to my total credit. And this will help me expand my break even points. On top of that, if you look at the delta for this call option, it's almost 20. And the delta for this call option here is going to offset some of the deltas for this put option. So now if Viacom drops in price by another dollar, the price of this put option will still increase by 80 bucks. So just with my put here, I would lose another $80. But for the call option here, since the price of call options decrease when the price of the underlying asset also decreases, that means if the price of Viacom drops by $1, the price of this call option is going to fall 
by around $20. And as an option seller, that's exactly what I want to happen. I always want the options I sell to fall in value. So just focusing on the call side of this position now, I would be up 20 bucks. So ultimately combining everything together now, if I lose 80 on the put here, but I make 20 on the call, that means in the end, I'm only down 60 bucks, not the full 80. So this is a great way to help slow down the bleeding if one of your short naked option positions is really starting to take on losses. Now I will also say I would not have waited until this point before selling a call option against this put here. In terms of when you should start making adjustments, in my opinion, you should make an adjustment once the strike of your option gets breached. So once the price of Viacom fell down to 60, that would be the time to act. And at that point, the delta for this put option would have only been around 50, which means at that point, if I then sold a call option with a delta of 20, 25, or 30, then that would have significantly helped slow the bleeding as Viacom continued to go lower. And in this case, as Viacom did continue to drop further, that means the delta for this put is going to continue to expand, and the delta for the call option I sold is going to shrink, right? Because my put option is going to become further and further in the money, and then for my call option, it's going to become further and further out of the money. And so that's why you may need to continually roll your call option down. Meaning in this case here, with a put delta of 80 and a call delta of just under 20, obviously this call option here is not doing a lot to offset the deltas on this put option here. So in that case, I might have to buy this contract back and then sell a new call option with the strike closer to where Viacom is trading. And in doing so, sell a call option with a higher delta. Maybe this one, for example. This 50 strike call here with a delta of almost 40 will basically eliminate half the deltas on my put option here. Moreover, I could sell this call option here for almost 300 bucks. So that would also expand my break even points quite significantly. And finally, before wrapping up here, I do want to say that all of this can be applied in the total opposite situation. If instead I had a call option that was super far in the money at this point, then I would just sell a put option against it. And based on the delta of the put that I sold as my hedge, that would act to slow the bleeding on my call option here by a lot, or maybe just a moderate amount, or just a little. That choice is on you to decide. How much of a hedge do you actually want? Given that Viacom has fallen so much in price, I would not mind being extremely bullish on this stock. So even though I certainly could sell this 50 strike call option as my hedge, and like I said, that would cut my put deltas in half essentially, maybe I don't mind having a lot of long delta on Viacom at this price point. And so as a result, maybe I do only want to sell this 60 strike call option and just offset my put deltas by a moderate amount. So therefore, if Viacom does start to recover, then I will actually make a lot of my money back because the vast majority of my directional bias with this entire position here is still coming from my put option. So like I said, it's really up to you to figure out how much of a hedge you want, and that's going to be mostly based on your directional assumption of the stock price. But I would definitely say that once your strike is breached, that is definitely the time to act because once your delta hits 50 at that point, your losses are going to really start to accelerate unless you actually do something. And so that concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And please let me know your thoughts or if you've got questions in the comment section below. And don't forget, if you wanna take some in-depth classes on options trading and stock market investing, then check out my Skillshare courses. Links in the description of this video. And finally, if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up, drop a comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And make sure those notifications are turned on. I'll be dropping new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and you don't wanna miss out. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.